Salutations, everyone, and welcome to What Mattered, the show where I tell you what mattered in the news this week. Phoenix Wright is getting his own anime. Objection! Said nobody ever, am I right? So our first story today has to do with Pokemon, and as always, our infos comes out of a leaked Koro Koro screenshot pictures of pages of stuff that is upcoming with Pokemon, the rumors about, you know, when's there going to be a Pokemon Z, and uh, it, it's, it's definitely going to happen. The new anime season is going to be called Pokemon X and Y and Z, and we always know that there's a Pokemon movie that comes out every single July, and that will be focusing on Zygarde, who is, you know, the Z from Pokemon Z, and there's also this weird thing with Ash's Greninja that, like, fuses with Ash or like gets his colors or something because like Greninja has a different looking color and that looks a lot like Ash and it's supposed to represent a special bond between the two. So uh, yeah, all they really have to do at this point is announce that Pokemon Z is coming out next year because I mean all of the signs are there. You have the Zygarde movie and you're changing the anime to Pokemon XY and Z. Uh, just, just tell us that Pokemon Z is coming out and give us a release date because we all know it's going to happen. Rumor has it that Christopher Nolan is in cahoots with Warner Brothers' latest attempt at making an Akira live-action film. Now, we've heard of an Akira live-action film being trying to get made for at least the last dozen years. No joke. Leonardo DiCaprio really tried to make it happen. And now the rumor is right now that Christopher Nolan is working with Warner Brothers to make an Akira trilogy. Now, if you split Akira into three films, one would gather that they are going to be deriving more from the manga than the original Akira film did, which left out like the last third or so. So that would be a very interesting idea. But as far as Christopher Nolan being attached to this kind of project, I'm really iffy about it and about an Akira live action film actually coming out because we've heard for the last dozen years that this has been, oh, it's it's going to make, oh, it's going to be in pre-production, oh, some people really want to do it, and it never happens. And I think this one is just going to be another one of those, yeah, guess what, no more Akira movie again. So at the Tokyo Game Show this week, there was an announcement of Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Now, bear with me, this is a wee bit confusing, but I'm trying to roll on through it. So Square started us off with 1.5 Remix, which came with three games with remastered all kinds of awesomeness, and then with 2.5, once again, three more games remastered. Now with 2.8, they're gonna give us three new games again. We're getting an HD remake of Dream Drops Distance, we're getting the cutscenes uh, remade from back cover, and a brand new story from The Birth by Sleep, which is gonna be focusing on Aqua, which takes place after the events of the original Birth by Sleep, and this will lead straight into Kingdom Hearts 3, which we know very little about, outside the fact that we have Tangled and Big Hero 6 Worlds in that game, and we well, we have no idea when that's coming out, but 2.8 coming out on the PlayStation 4, said the PS3 uh, this time, so now we have nine remastered Kingdom Hearts awesomeness to get us pumped for number three. And what is hopefully the final time this happens this year, we have been deprived of another fantastic AAA title that has been cast aside to 2016, and this time the casualty is Star Fox Zero. I'm, I'm tired of this Nintendo, you break, break my heart too many times. I mean, first we had, you know, a bunch of things, you know, at the beginning of the year, tossed to 2016, that's gonna happen. And then we had Mighty Number no. 9, and even the demo for Mighty Number no. 9 is being, you know, postponed. And now we have Star Fox Zero. It's like, oh my gosh, at least, at least Halo 5 Guardians won't be kicked back to 2016, right? Am I, I, I hope I'm right. I mean, at least I don't think you Fallout fans have anything to worry about, because Bethesda's pretty good on that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, no Star Fox Zero for this guy this year, but first quarter 2016, get hyped. A lot of things have been pushed to that quarter, so things are going to continue to be busy at the beginning of next year. And because the world can't get enough, there's going to be another Five Night at Freddy's games. Now, it's not within the same line of Five Night at Freddy's. It's not a continuation after five. He says that that story is done with. There's no more Five Night at Freddy's, which I said before, I'm pretty skeptical on, and that's usually a thing that happens with horror games. They just keep making more, even when they said they're going to be done. But this one's going to be an RPG and not a horror game. I think it's still going to sell insanely well and be big on YouTube just because it is a Five Night at Freddy's game. We're exploring the world of Five Night at Freddy's. Maybe it's not going to be just filled with, you know, an entire game system pointed straight towards are you going to get jump scared or not? 
Uh, but it's going to have those characters and people really, really love these characters and that world. So I think it's still going to sell well. Who knows if people are going to like it as much as your jump scare Friday Night at Freddy versions. But this one's going to be an RPG. RPG. It might have something uh, for the fans to tide them over for when the movie and the eventual next Five Night at Freddy's games comes out. Because, I mean... Unless the guy is just sick of making money, which usually isn't in the case, but, you know, credit to him if he does decide to be sick of money, but uh, most people don't, so it'll happen. And in the world of oopsies, Last of Us 2 may have been confirmed during a Naughty Dog live stream in which someone was talking about the Uncharted series. They're like, yeah, this guy did the facial, you know, animations and stuff for, for, for uh, you know, Uncharted 1, 2, 3, and then the first Last of Us. Oops, did I say the first Last of Us? So, kind of slipped there. Nolan North said months ago that they he knew that Naughty Dog was working on Last of Us 2. We don't have any official confirmation yet outside of that little oopsies there. Um, but it wouldn't be a surprise because of how that game ended. No spoilers, but it's an amazing game. Go play it. PS3, PS4, whatever you want to do. And I don't think anybody, anybody would be disappointed in a second game, no matter what they decide to do with it, just because that game was so awesome from a narrative standpoint, from a combat standpoint, from the singer player, the multiplayer, that was a surprise, awesome, super fun hit. And uh, yeah, Last of Us 2, please, please, please be true. And speaking of awesome things that hopefully are as good as we hope they will be, there was announced by DC, Warner Brothers, this week, that there will be a Booster Gold Blue Beetle Buddy Cop movie, which is so much win. We have been wanting so much Booster Gold live action in any capacity for a while. He's such a fun character. We had tweets from Nathan Fillion just a couple weeks ago saying how badly he wanted to be Booster Gold if he can be any other, uh, you know, superhero character. And we have Ted Gord here, you know, his his best friend, and in a buddy cop comedy style, and it was like, oh, DC doesn't do comedy, blah, blah, blah. Everything should be jokes, 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 and not so serious. Well, fuck you, people, because guess what? DC's doing comedy. We already know that DC has the uh, the insurance uh, office uh, comedy set in the DCU uh, that I was hoping would start Booster Gold, but now we know that Booster Gold is, is going to be a movie, and it's going to be with Blue Beat beetle and it's going to be a buddy cop and it's going to be funny and it will take place in the shared dc cinematic universe with you know the suicide squad and the batmans and the supermans and the wonder woman so all within the same shared universe it could be hilariously funny if they cast it correctly and it's written very well greg berlanti the producer and the main guy from the flash and the arrow is going to be producing this film there's words about you know getting some you know previous Marvel writers on this uh, on this gig, and it could be awesome if they do it correctly because such a funny character, uh, so many different directions that they could go. Wide open ended. We just need a good cast and a good script, and it would just be awesome. Looks like Universal isn't done making adaptations of '90s novels into movies we have the goosebumps movie which we know is coming out and there's rumors that they're already thinking of doing a sequel for that well next up apparently on the chopping block is animorphs a series that i absolutely loved as a young child the book series was amazing it ran for like 45 books or whatever and the nickelodeon had their two seasons of of the show and that was like the first jaw dropping moment i had as a kid was watching the pilot of animorphs i was just like that was amazing based off of a series that i really liked you know in print and seeing it you know a live action it was fantastic i'm sure it doesn't hold up as well right now but a, a movie could be pretty cool and nostalgic for 90s kids uh like me and it could be done pretty well you know they don't have to please a lot of fans when it comes to sticking to the original but you know they made different changes with the goosebumps books obviously if you've seen the trailer um, so yeah, there's the different directions that they can go, and it could be pretty, pretty cool if they get a pretty good cast, a well-written script, and they don't skimp on the CGI. Anywho, that is what mattered this week. If you'd like to know what matters in the future, you can hit the subscribe button when these comes out every single Saturday. Hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you next time.